Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Hit You Good, and in today's episode, we're going 12 years back in time to relive some of those awe-inspiring moments of kicking communist ass, taking back DC, and dishing out a heaping service of justice to old Gunny McGee himself. We're going back to Modern Warfare 2. Now in this video, you're not going to get the most objective view from me, as the nostalgia of this game is palpable. It hits pretty hard. I will, however, give you a straight up or down opinion if Modern Warfare 2 is worth buying 12 years later, and the state of the game, the number of players, and how much hacking is going on as can often occur in these older titles. Remember, if you do like this content and you want to support your favorite all-American freedom-loving gamer, please click the subscribe button below, and don't forget to tap the notification bell so you can keep up with everything that I've got going on. <laughs> hey, thanks XS, we appreciate the support, man. I remember way back in 2009, the world just seemed to be a better place, and probably so. That's probably true. We didn't know it at the time, and our parents would always say that you're going to miss this. You're going to wish you could go back to today when you get older. You're going to want this back. But I tell you, I was just looking forward to getting out of the house and starting my life. But man, those late night gaming sessions with friends that have grown up now and moved on, we probably won't ever get those back. But we do have the opportunity to download Modern Warfare 2 today and relive some of the good old days when skill-based matchmaking wasn't a thing, loot boxes were unheard of, and lobbies were absolute mosh pits of insults and screaming 12-year-olds whose parents really didn't care enough to keep their virgin minds away from the M-rated content. So, going back to Modern Warfare 2 really took me back to, honestly, a much better time in gaming. Yeah, today's graphics are better, the gunplay is more realistic, the moving is more advanced, but back when Infinity Ward released Modern Warfare 2, this was a time where game developers had to get it right the first time. There was no releasing half a game for a premium price and promising to fix the bugs, add needed content, rebalance weapons, adjust time to kill, scale the skill-based matchmaking. Uh, no, there's none of that. You went to Walmart, you went to Best Buy, or you went to GameStop, and you bought a complete game on a disc. It was all there, and if there were any DLCs, that was actually bonus content, not content that should have been in the game at launch. It was extra. Can you believe it? In all of these menus, I've looked everywhere. There are no loot boxes, no battle pass, no microtransactions, none of it. And it helped make Modern Warfare 2 a better game. Now rest assured, we are going to get to player counts and hacked lobbies and uh, you know how this game stands up in 2021, and you can even skip ahead of that if you want to. Uh, but for the time being, I do want to share my own personal experience with Modern Warfare 2, you know, kind of how it impacted my life and why it was a great game for that certain time in my life back then and why I enjoyed it. And while we're at that, if you would, leave me a comment in the uh, comment section below. Maybe, you know, share some fun stories about you and your friends hopping online or what the game meant to you back in 2009 and why you thought it was great. I do take as much time as possible to read every comment and reply to every comment. Uh, so definitely tell me your story below. But as for me, back in 2009, I really began learning a whole lot about politics and world wars and history and stuff like that, um, much further beyond the scope of what the school system had taught me. Um, I began to have a genuine interest in such topics and get more of an understanding of my world and uh, also an understanding of my personal belief of why I believe America is the best damn country in the world. And because of that, this campaign seriously rocked. Man, I tell you, the campaign missions fighting in neighborhoods that looked like mine, among a capital building grounds that looked like mine, in a time setting that looked like mine, all in a situation that... Um, at the time actually seemed plausible in the future. I was seriously hyped up for this game, uh, you know, playing through some of these missions, and of course pretty much carrying the entire US military on my back was a little tiring, but hell, it made me feel important. And it may seem kind of dumb to you to get excited about taking back Burger Town, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's no better way to get a bunch of red-blooded Americans ready to kick some ass when we see our favorite burger joints been taken over by a bunch of twinkle-toed communists. Of course, this all hyped us up, despite the fact that the game still touted a major plot hole of Russia invading mainland America for simply no other reason than a dead American lying at the scene of an airport terrorist attack. 
that and this guy here just chilling and eating a candy bar or something while bullets are spraying everywhere. And then General Shepard just walking away from the middle of a hot fight that he just jerked your butt into. But I digress. It seriously got my blood pumping to be riding around in a Humvee and a subdivision and seeing foreign bombers and troop transports flying overhead. It had my newfound patriotism bouncing off the tack. It was every redneck's dream come true. Because this is what it does. It appeals like the male fantasy. But instead of a home invasion, it was a homeland invasion where we get to try out the AR-15 in a real combat situation. Too bad as many people don't know, the AR-15 has never been used in any kind of military exercise or in any military campaign. But that's another topic for another day. I remember showing my girlfriend the Wolverines level and she remarked about how awful it would be if that really happened. Uh, yeah, for the damn communists. Now don't get me wrong, war is hell, war is awful, and it should never be glamorized, but I can still see myself clearing out those virtual houses from those freedom-hating spitznaz boys with a sense of American pride and duty! Hey! Get out of my refrigerator! Alright, HQ, Bud Light has been secured over. And then going all the way to DC to kick their asses too? How cool of a game is that? And all of this was peppered throughout with some rousing speeches from Shepard who Unfortunately, as we all know, believed more in his own accomplishments than the good of his country, but spoiler alert, he got his in the end. But all that being said, it was one of the best games I'd ever played up until then, and it still stands as a breakthrough, a benchmark, and a milestone of modern gaming achievement. While Call of Duty not only pushed the envelope in ways of gameplay and technology, it also pushed the envelope in ways of controversy as well. Even after eight years, the topic of 9-11 was still, and rightfully so, a touchy subject and the level No Russian revisited that sore spot. And of course, the older generation had no understanding of video games as multiple news outlets rushed to denounce the game as needlessly violent and cruel. And it's very realistic. Modern Warfare 2 just showed us the brutal reality of evil in the world. It exists. And while we shouldn't enjoy the spectacle at all, it's imperative we remain aware of what fellow human beings can do to one another. And ignorance of this fact could easily lead to far more tyrannical brutality than any video game ever could. But of course, the mainstream media rushed to declare that this would cause massive violent tendencies for young adults who played this game, when no one ever really seemed to come up with any evidence suggesting this was the case. There's no question that there's a correlation between video and game violence and screen violence and aggression in real mm -hmm. life. We need to treat violent video games the way we treat tobacco, alcohol, and That's pornography. Cool. In reality, parents who let their kids play adult games while their brains are still developing and the absence of morality and religion from the public school system have caused exponentially more damage to society than any quote-unquote violent video game ever has. But once again, that's another topic. Now all that aside, we're here to find out if Modern Warfare 2 is even playable in 2022 in the multiplayer and if you can even find any game modes that are still alive out there on a game this old. To simply answer the question, Yes, you can, but you're not going to find any full games in demolition mode. You might be lucky to find one in some of the less populated game modes at all. Uh, but we will go a little more in depth on some of this. But as far as the gameplay goes, it's simple, it's straightforward, and that's not always a bad thing. I thought it would be a chore to go back and play a game this old with the dated mechanics, the archaic gunplay, um, the movement. But I have to be real with y'all. It was an absolute joy. And I'm sure a lot of that comes from the nostalgia of playing my first first-person shooter game that I actually cared anything about and spent hundreds of hours on. But going back and seeing all the spots me and my friends used to try and hold down was truly neat and even relaxing. Because, I mean, back then, you know, we used to play this game. There was no bills. There were no over-exaggerated pandemics. Just a few hours with friends and not a whole lot to worry about. But, you know, I guess the devs at Infinity Ward figured, well, if you make everything overpowered, well, nothing's overpowered. You just have a crazy fast TTK to contend with, so if you land your first shots, you're likely to win. Unless you're facing a noob tube, an AA-12 shotgun, stuns. Hey, you. I'm finally awake. Yeah, you get it. Everything's OP. It also seems that hitboxes in this game are much larger than anything of today's standards. I found myself constantly being surprised to hit and even eliminate targets that I would have to be much more precise with to even get a hit marker in some of these more modern games. 
But this does work both ways, as no amount of bunny hopping is going to save your butt if you don't have substantial cover to get in immediately upon taking that first hit. And there's a downside to that too. Um, you'll think you're solidly behind cover only to get beamed and see your body a few feet away from diving behind a wall in the kill cam. Now this is probably more a side effect of a low player count and matchmaking trying to connect people from you know vast distances but uh, rather than really a defect in the hit reg and ping in the game itself. So you can't take this too seriously but that's part of what makes it fun. This is probably more of a side effect of a low player count and matchmaking trying to connect people from all over and far distances <laughs> rather than a defect in the hit reg and ping in the game itself. So you can't take this too seriously but that's part of what makes it fun. And part of that fun also comes from regular lobbies that aren't regulated by skill-based matchmaking. So you can go in and not every single person is running the same gun, the same loadout, and the same perks. Also, one thing that's kind of annoying I found with this is, and I think it is built in by design, is the small amount of ammo you have when you're spawning in. But I've had to adjust my gameplay drastically at times just because I'd run out of ammo, I'd just use my last rocket, so I didn't have anything. I had to scramble to find another gun, and when I did, it was usually just as viable as whatever I'd been using before, um, but it was still unique to a very certain playstyle. Your entire loadout could lend itself to a specific purpose. Sniping, stealth, run and gun, damn you akimbo G18s, run around with the scavenger perk and only use a noob tube, which I totally was never guilty of, but my point is that Everything was unique and overpowered and fun to use, and that's what it was about. There wasn't any crazy gimmicks to get us to play longer, no skill-based matchmaking, no battle pass, no loot boxes. There wasn't any algorithms deciding where to place us in lobbies so we'd play longer. Let me tell you what made us play longer. A good freaking game, and that's what we had. And if we saw someone running around with a gun we wanted, we didn't just go buy it. We played the game. We grinded for it, and when we unlocked it, it was a staple of our achievement. It showcased the hours we put into our gameplay. That and the emblems and calling cards were actually pretty imaginative and they were fun to unlock. Gaming was so much more fun back in the day just because of the absence oh, of the money-grubbing <laughs> gimmicks that we see in today's titles. Okay. But if devs are going to make crappier games, they're going to have to find more ways to make money. And the success of the Golden Days of COD is a testament to how good gaming can be without developers psychoanalyzing their customer base on how to exploit addiction-based habits so they can just keep that cold, hard cash steadily pouring in. And another th great thing about this game is the perk system. Today in Modern Warfare 2019, probably half the player base is using one or two of the same perks in each category and the rest are crap. With Modern Warfare 2, you've probably got 11 or 12 of the 17 in this game that are really useful and good perks and even more so with the pro version unlocks and yeah i know death streaks are absolute bs i remember that too so nothing was worse than mag dumping some noob while you see this little son of a bitch show up on your cursor and him turning on you and railing you in three shots so yeah modern warfare 2 wasn't perfect uh, that and having shotguns as secondaries was bull and still is but we still love the game it's still fun to play today now surprisingly, for about every five hours of gameplay, I'd run into one hacked server. Going into this, I figured it'd be completely riddled with cheaters, but I'm glad to say I don't think it is. Now, results are definitely going to vary based on where you live, when you hop on, and just individual circumstances. You know, you might hop on and get three hacked servers in a row, but specifically in my personal experience, I didn't see near as many hackers as I expected. Hell, I ran into less hackers playing this 12-year-old game for five hours than I did playing two matches of Warzone. Now, I do live on the East Coast, and I've had a hard time finding a game other than Team Deathmatch. Um, I have found some domination maps, but they didn't last that long. And that being said, the weekends are probably going to be your best shot at finding something. Demolition, Capture the Flag, and other less populated modes are probably going to be hard to find now. Maybe even non-existent, unless you bring your own player base on with you um, to enjoy this game. Um, however, there were times I'd load into a Team Deathmatch lobby, which are ample and I could hop on at any time and I'd end up playing Search and Destroy, so you might get lucky enough to mix it up. But the question everybody wants to know is, should you buy Modern Warfare 2 in 2021? And unfortunately, the answer is, well, it depends. It's $20 on Steam, and you might can get it for around $17 on GTA.com. Uh, if you're looking for the most bang for your buck, though, in a video game, I'm probably going to steer you elsewhere. I'd probably say no. There's just simply not enough game modes. There's not enough players to keep you satisfied if you only have $20 to throw at something. On the other hand, 
you can spend $30 uh, with EA and get three full Battlefield games, and you're going to have fully populated servers. You're going to have a ton of game modes to keep you busy, um, and it's going to be—they're going to be more modern style games. But if you are a COD connoisseur and you really want to jump back in time and experience that, I'd say go for it. In fact, I would definitely encourage you to buy this game instead of the remastered version that Activision came out with. Unless better graphics are and just a few differences here and there mean a whole lot to you, I really kind of think that Activision is ripping some people off with this remastered version. Now sure, the graphics are a heck of a lot better and it does bring Modern Warfare 2 into 2022, but it's only the campaign. Because ultimately, they're selling you one third of the game for the same price. But by buying the 2009 version, you're getting the campaign, the multiplayer, and you're getting the legendary Spec Ops mode that I think was absolutely fun. I spent hours trying to grind out for those three stars on each individual mission. You're getting three times the game for the same price and worse but not awful graphics. That's it. And you may opt not to buy either of these for the money and you can you know, find numerous other games uh, with higher player counts and more advanced movement, gra graphics, and better atmosphere. But if you really want that nostalgia to hit hard and $20 don't mean that much to you, hop on and play a few rounds. I highly recommend it. Ultimately, Modern Warfare 2 will hold a dear place in all of our hearts. It was the first FPS game that I actually played a lot of and dedicated serious time to. It shaped our expectations and excitement for the next decade of gaming, and it kept us entertained with this new medium of entertainment that creators like KYR Speedy and Legion and Ali A were coming up with. It was a medium that we could meet up with friends online, and then in real life we could laugh about that crazy in-game kill one of us managed to pull off the night before. It gave us videos to share and laugh at. It became a part of our lives. It added flavor to the late 2000s and the early 2010s. And now it gives us a place that we can go relive those simpler times. So if you can, hop on for a few hours and take it back 12 years. And if not, that's totally cool if it's not your cup of tea. I really do hope that you can relive some of that nostalgia uh, and some of those you know, awesome moments back then through this video and some of the content that I create. Because truth be told, these older video games, they're dwindling and they're not going to be around forever. It's up to us to periodically revive them, enjoy them, reminisce about them, play them, and never forget how we felt back in 2009 ridding our neighborhoods of the Russian invasion, waving flares on top of the Capitol building to signify victory and hope when all seemed bleak, and ultimately giving Shepard exactly what he deserved in a fantastic in-game throw and knife kill. It was over the top. It was cinematic. It was patriotic. And it was the beginning of the golden age for first-person shooters that would shape our late-night gaming sessions for years to come. It was Modern Warfare 2. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been putting a lot of time into these, trying to make each video a little bit better than the last. So if you think that my content's improving, please uh, leave a like and comment below. Uh, and please, if you do want to support your favorite all-American freedom-loving gamer, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with everything that we're doing. And also, on top of all that, what's really important to me is I want to know your story back in 2009, 2010. Uh, and those subsequent years that you played Modern Warfare 2 and tell me some cool stories about what you and your buddies did back then. Anyways guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video and supporting my channel. Hit you good out.